Hi, welcome to Ask Bobby. This is your opportunity to ask me any question you have, whether it's on improv or life in general, and I'll do my best, my very best to respond. Okay? So let's jump right into the questions. Question from Joe. Why do birds suddenly appear? That's a great question, Joe. Uh, as far as I know, birds are instinctual creatures, so they're going to fly and go whenever <laughs> they want based on their internal biology. However, I will say this. If you're with somebody, and every time you're with them, you notice that birds are suddenly appearing, then you might be in love. Because Karen Carpenter told us that. Thanks for your question, Joe. Laura writes, Bobby, what is my purpose in life? My suggestion would be to realize that, well, in my opinion anyway, you only have one life. So really, really live it to its fullest. Um, you know, it reminds me when, when I was a little boy, my dad would take me golfing, and every time we went to golf, he would say, our job is to leave the course better off than when we had it, okay? So I think your job is to leave the world better off than when you were on it. So all the people that you meet on your journey, the earth itself, Leave everything in better condition. So give love, give life, give happiness to everything around you. And then when you leave, uh, you've left the world in a better place. That's my answer. Okay, Ben writes, Do you ever feel like you don't know what to do in a scene? If yes, what do you do to get out of that? This happens all the time in an improv scene for me. Um, my recommendation is when I'm kind of unsure where things are, are going or what's happening, I really, really connect to my scene partner, really listen to what he or she says, and try to build based on that. So I think my uh, biggest suggestion would be to really, really connect to the person that you're with, and then go from there. Dustin writes, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Yes. Sean writes, what was the one moment when you thought, yeah, I want to be an improviser? Well, I initially got into improvisation um, after I was doing a lot of scripted work and I was told, you know, you need to take improv to be become a better actor. So I remember being in an improv class once and uh, I did a scene with another person and that scene felt more alive to me than anything I had ever done scripted. And I think that was the moment that I was like, yes, this is for me. I want to be an improviser. Ben writes, if you could play any role in a play or movie, what would it be and why? My dream role on stage is Hamlet. One day that's going to happen for me, hopefully, but yes, uh, I would love to play Hamlet. Uh, in a movie, I would love to do a, a movie where I played the role of Bruce Lee. <laughs> that was kind of my idol growing up, so I would love to uh, do a movie where I actually play Bruce Lee. Dean writes, what inspires you? Uh, many things inspire me, Dean. I would say uh, art, beauty, nature, all, all the lovely things around us. If you're talking specifically improv, um, when, my, when my buddies and I went to Chicago for the very first time and we were just watching all of these amazing groups do improv in Chicago, that was really awe-inspiring for me um, and that really, really got me going with improv today. So those are my answers. Aaron writes, what sort of hair products do you use? I use got to be spiked up because guys, I've got to be spiked up. Peter writes, if a rooster lays an egg on a roof, on which side will it roll down? Well, as far as I know, roosters can't lay eggs because they're males, right? So I'm going to say, I don't think a rooster can lay an egg. So, sorry, Peter, I don't think I can answer that question. Rachel writes, what are some examples of awesome improv gifts to give? Ah, I think when you look at your scene partner in the eye and you're ready for whatever comes out of their mouth, attentively listening, attentively ready to do whatever happens, I think that's the best, best improv gift you can give somebody. Showing that you're there for them, showing that you're ready to attack whatever wonderful world you're going to create together, that's the best gift you can give. Trent writes, do you prefer short form or long form? What's your favorite Shakespeare? What's your least favorite Shakespeare? And how many pull-ups can you do? <laughs> okay, Trent. Uh, I love short form and long form equally. To me, improv is improv and I love improv. 
My favorite Shakespeare play, wow, that's tough. Uh, I would definitely say Hamlet's up there. Uh, it's my dream role, so I would have to pick Hamlet. Uh, my least favorite Shakespeare play would be one of the histories. Some of those are a little bit long in the tooth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, how many pull-ups can I do? Great question. I could probably do uh, 30 pull-ups um, in one try. Carolyn writes, you plan some stuff though, right? Carolyn, no we don't. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Bob writes, why does improv focus so much on comedy and not as much on drama? The press touts great comedy actors that came out of improv, but I never ever hear about great actors coming from improv. The marketing of improv troops appears to focus more on comedy than drama, yet there are two sides of the same coin. Please share your thoughts on this observation. My first response would be, any very famous people that are improv actors, uh, who are great, great comedy actors, in my opinion, all those people are wonderful actors. They could do drama equally well, equally as well as comedy. Will Ferrell is a perfect example. Steve Carell is a perfect example. Watch their drama movies. They're equally impressive. They're just as good as their comedy movies, in my opinion, in terms of their acting. Uh, as a student actor, I would suggest definitely take improv because it really, really works on your listening skills and being in the moment. And that is so easily uh, applicable to scripted acting as well. In terms of troops uh, advertising comedy, often improv shows are funny. And so uh, usually when you're advertising, you want the uh, public to know what they're getting into. Uh, with the San Jose Improv and other improvs that are actually stand-up comedy, it's easy to see where improv got associated with comedy. But often when we're talking about improv as an art form, uh, where things can happen and anything can happen and the audience is in on the joke, often even in very, very serious scenes, uh, it becomes funny. And you gotta remember, Bob, real life is funny. You're gonna see um, improv actors try to recreate real life on a stage, and there's gonna be moments of drama, and there's gonna be moments of comedy, and that just happens because we're reenacting real life. So uh, I hope that sort of answers your question. I think improv actors are amazing at both comedy and drama, and I think uh, overall it helps your acting ability uh, immensely. Sarah writes, this is the best. Thank you, Sarah. You're the best. Neat writes, Bobby, how do you remove the yolk from a dragon egg? Wow. Usually I try to answer questions based on my actual experience, and I have never had a dragon egg, and I've never removed the yolk from a dragon egg. However, I have removed yolks from chicken eggs all the time. So I would recommend doing the same, in that you open up, you swirl it around, and you get the yolk in the middle, and drop. Ba ba ba, beneath, boom. But what if it's what if it's big? How big is it? Like what if it's this big? Oh my gosh! What if it's this big, like a big dragon, like a big egg, like dinosaur style? I don't know. It's a good question. You gotta answer it. <laughs> oh my god! You know, after doing some research on this, if your dragon egg is really really big. You probably want to get out of that area because that means mama is really, really big. <laughs> Danielle writes, where do babies come from? Great question. Well, when two people love each other. <laughs> A stork. Thank you.